Hi and welcome, I'm Elvira Boulet from the Dimitrov Boulet Piano Duo and I'm going to make a video on the first arabesque of Debussy because we were requested to make a, a video on this specifically about the triplets against the eighth notes in the very beginning. So let's get started. So the piece starts with triplets, uh, let me see. Um... So you're really into the triplet mood, right? Your right hand has triplets and your left hand has triplets. And then when we get to this section, which starts in bar 7, actually the left hand starts playing 8th notes. And you're wondering maybe how you can see that. Well, actually, um, there's two different ways of seeing that. The first is that when there are triplets, there's usually a, a 3 written above or below the group of notes. So you see in the very beginning, that they indicate in the first bar, the right and the left hand, uh, with this diagonally written three. So the three distinctively looks different than the three uh, that indicates fingering. I'll show you there as a comparison. For example, in bar six, we see a three of fingering. And you see that the three of indicating fingering is smaller and also straight, and the three indicating triplets is bigger and also diagonal. Um, so that's that's one way of knowing that you're playing triplets and it's actually sometimes also triplets come with a little bracket makes it even more clear and that's very pleasant when publishers do this because you know there's enough information to to see on the page it's very nice if they give you a hand so the other way of seeing whether you're playing triplets or eighth notes is a little bit more complicated because it involves counting it involves the rhythm so we're, if we look, take a look at the first bar, we're in a 4-4 four, four time signature, which means there's four beats in this bar and in every other bar of the piece, unless the time signature changes. Um, so in the first bar, there are four beats and there are four groups of three notes. So normal eight notes are half a beat, right? So if you would have normal eight notes, you could have, if you have four beats in a bar, you could have maximum eight eight notes. And if you count in the first bar, there are 12 eight notes. So these have to be triplets, otherwise you have too many beats in this bar. So that's the second way of knowing if you have to play triplets or not. Um, usually, however, they are indicated by uh, as triplets. And you see that actually in the bar that we're going to talk about now, the triplets against the eight notes. So to make it nice and clear, the publisher actually indicates, even though we've been playing triplets so far in the first six bars, they indicate in the right hand, again in bar seven, the, the triplet sign. That is because the left hand is no longer playing triplets. So if we actually use what I, the little trick that I told you before, if we actually count the eight notes, this time there are eight, eight notes in this bar, which means <laughs> the eighth notes of the left hand really are eighth notes. I feel like I need to take a shot every time I say eighth notes. So in other words, in bar seven is the first time that we're actually playing eighth notes, in the left hand and we're continuing to play triplets, eight note triplets in the right hand. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at that bar. So the first step in this section is actually fingering. The fingering that's indicated in this score actually works, I think, pretty well. So it's four, five, two, one, five, three, and they indicate four, two. I would just continue with three, uh, three, so three, five, two. I wouldn't see no reason to to make a big stretch um, on this interval because I have small hands and they don't stretch very well. So personally, I would change that to three, five, but that's um, up to you. If, that's, uh, if you have actually very large hands, that might be exactly very uncomfortable for you. So fingering is a tricky concept. I mean, if you're following us, you know that we talk a lot about fingering because it's one of the big, big secrets of piano playing. Um, what I would do if I were you is I would download a few scores from IMSLP and take a look at the fingering of each of them and compare them. So in that way, you can already start to see a preference because if you look at only one fingering indication and you think, well, this is not very comfortable, you might get confused because, to be honest, this is not a very comfortable run for the right hand. So take a look at the fingering and my advice would be to check out a few different scores on IMSLP. I'm sure there's a there's a lot 
just download them, compare them, play them both, maybe even combine them like I did just now. I made a, I used this, but I made a little adjustment for my own hands. Let's take a look at the left hand. simple uh, run in the left hand, very standard kind of run, um, just a broken chord and I think it's a very standard fingering that's written here. Let me see if I actually do that. Actually the second run I actually do 5-2-1-2-1. Two, one, two, one. This is something you could consider because the 1-4 is a little bit of a large turn for me so I prefer to do 1-2-1-2-1. One, two, one, two, one. Yeah, so that's actually something you can consider doing if you find the, the turn between the E and the G sharp a little bit too large doing it with 1-4, you can consider doing it with 1-2. Um, so one thing about fingering, this is a piece that I uh, studied when I was very, very young and I didn't listen so well to my teacher indicating how important fingering is, so don't make that mistake, please. Um, and I actually do very strange fingering here because... You know, when you when you practice something very very young, it kind of stays in your in your memory. So somehow this fingering just just stays with me, and when I'm just playing it, it automatically goes to that horrible fingering that I used. So please don't make that mistake. And please, one of the first things that you do when you learn a piece is just take a look at some different fingerings, see what's comfortable, and stick to it, because it's gonna save you hours and hours of practice time. Okay, so that's the first step. You take a look at the fingering, you kind of play around with it, see what's comfortable. Now you're ready to actually do the triplets against eight notes. Don't start trying to do it before you nail down your fingering, yeah? So you probably watched our video, Triplets Against Eight Notes. If you didn't, I'll link it up for you here because I think it's a very, very um, good video to watch about the general knowledge of Triplets Against Eight Notes. I'm not going to go through that explanation again. But ho however, I'm going to take a look at it specifically now here. I'm going to take my phone and just we're going to record it this way. Let me see. Okay, so if we take a look here, um, the group of triplets starts here, right? So one thing you always have to remember, the triplets are always written per three. You see there are three here, three here, and three here. That have We have three groups of three notes here. So... You can see that I did this work actually when I studied it for the first time when I was very small. I actually already did this this work that I'm going to do now together with you. What you need to remember is when you have a group of triplets, it always starts together with the eight notes. Now, generally, almost all scores are printed neatly, so you can actually see which one starts with which one. That means that the first note of the triplet here, the E, starts with the E in the left hand. So remember, when you start off with a group of triplets, they start together. The exception, of course, is if there was written a rest here instead of an, a note. But in general, the, rhythmically, they start together. So remember that. Now, a little trick to remember which a hand actually goes first now, because remember, we're playing notes after each other, not together anymore. Until the next first note of the next triplet, we're not playing any notes together. They're all coming in between each other. So we start off together, then... To remember which hand is going to go first now, you always need to remember which note, which hand is playing more notes. In the right hand is playing three notes, in the same time as the left hand is playing two notes. So the right hand has to go first because the right hand has more notes to play. So we start off together, then right hand plays the F sharp, then the left hand plays the G sharp, then the right hand ends with the C sharp. Then we're at the next triplet and we start this off again together. Our E is going to be played together with our B. Then remember, right hand has more notes to play. So the right hand continues first with the B. Left hand plays the G sharp and the right hand plays the C sharp to end. We're at the next triplet, which we start off together again. The G sharp with the E. Then again, right hand has more notes to play. So they start off, right hand starts off with the B, left hand plays the B, and then the right hand uh, continues with the F sharp, and then we're at the next bar, which we start again off together. And that continues. Now, if you're confused about this bar, this note is together, the D sharp is together with the E, 
and the C sharp is together with the E because we're done playing triplets here. These are just a normal half note, a normal quarter note, and they come together with the normal eighth notes here in the left hand. So I hope that was um, clear, that clarified a little bit what timing we're going to use. And I want you first to play it like, let's say a hundred times to get used to which note comes with which. That should be your first step always, a hundred times or more, as much as is needed to get used to the timing, to get the timing easy, yeah? You start off together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together, right, left, right, together. And you do that a hundred times or more if necessary. So once you repeated this so much, so often that you don't have to think anymore about the order of the notes and the order of the hands, then I suggest you do the exercise that Dimitar was talking about in the video triplets against eight notes. And I, because I think that honestly works really, really well to time the notes right. Because even if you practice it and get the hang of the order, so you, you are knowing which order, you very often see um, when you're not used to playing the triplets against the eight notes that they kind of sound like, like a lame horse, you know? Uh, so like, very uneven, very um, not not evenly timed. So your triplets need to sound like triplets and your eighth notes need to sound like eighth notes. It doesn't, it shouldn't sound like, now this one, now this one, now this one. Um, so take a look at the exercise that Dimitar was discussing and apply that in this situation. This exact section that we were discussing actually comes back exactly the same in the reprise. Um, Actually, it comes back two times, I think. Yes, one in, once in the reprise and once at the very, very ending, an octave higher. It's so exactly the same, but an octave higher in the right hand. That should be pretty clear. That's just exactly the same. And there are several places throughout this piece in which you are playing just triplets against eighth notes, but a much smaller section. And an example of that would be um, in this place in which you, again, the triplets are indicated with a um, diagonally printed a larger three. So we have this bar, let me see here. So again, one, once again, and this is easier to time because it's not a large section. You start off together, then right hand, then left hand, then right hand. And, and throughout the whole piece, there are these smaller places that you play a triplets against eighth notes. I'm not going to go through all of them, but if you do have a question, if you're not sure whether you have to play triplets or you're not sure about the timing, please just leave a comment below. Um, I think that was it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any more questions about this piece in particular, or any other piece uh, for that matter, please leave us a comment. We love to help you more specifically, you know, what you need. And uh, please send us a link to your plane. We'd love to hear you. We can, keep, we can keep it anonymous if you want. If you're shy, don't worry. Um, and I wish you a lot of luck. This is a wonderful piece, so have fun with it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, on, on Facebook and, um, well, I think that was it. So thanks for watching and see you next week.